guys, it's Starlet Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos, and welcome to Hungry Hippo. Today I'm going to show you how I make homemade chicken noodle soup in the crock pot. It is so easy. You literally dump all the ingredients into your crock pot, cook it on low heat for six to eight hours, add the noodles in at the end, and you've got homemade chicken noodle soup that you didn't have to stand over a stove stirring all day. Um, it's a set it and forget it one pot meal. So let's talk about what you're going to need first. Um, there are a lot of ingredients as you can see, but it is chicken noodle soup, which does take quite a few ingredients. But I think this is the simplest recipe I've ever worked with. And it's very versatile. You can use any of the spices and the herbs that you see here on the table in a fresh form right out of the garden or buy it out of the produce aisle, or you can use the jarred, dried, or powders. Um, I will link in the description box for you guys the link to the Cook's Thesaurus so that you can see how you can substitute any of these for different variations. Um, I do have a cheat sheet here because it does have so many ingredients and so many steps that I still have to use a cheat sheet when I make it. Um, I meant to make this in the fall for you guys because everyone loves to eat soup and grilled cheese in the fall and I just kept putting it off. So here we are, it's already spring and warm weather. We're gonna have chicken noodle soup. But I think this is a good recipe any time of year if you've got someone in your house with a cold or allergies, or you just feel like having some kind of comfort food, this is a really good recipe. You can freeze it in airtight containers for like a month, two months I think is the most I've ever gone. Um, it makes a lot, so if you have a small family, you'll have a lot left over. You can give it to friends, you can send it to churches, fire halls, freeze it, whatever. It makes a lot. Um, I do have a friend that I taught this to that actually doubles it and makes a whole bunch to give out to people in the colder months. Um, but let's just look at what we need. I digressed there on you, sorry about that. So you're gonna need one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Mine are already in there. They can go right in frozen, but you want those to go in on the bottom. Then you're going to need two cups of carrots. Now I cheat and I buy a 16 ounce bag of crinkle cut carrots and um, use those. I put them right on in frozen. You can buy, if you want to be a little bit more budget friendly, you can buy whole carrots and peel them and cut them up yourself. You could be uh, a little bit more cheater with like the baby carrots and cut those up yourself. Um, but you can use any kind of carrots as long as you have two cups of carrots. You need one medium onion. And for those of you that have been watching Hungry Hippo for a while, know that Keith does not like onion. So I substitute one tablespoon of minced. Anytime a recipe calls for onion. You need three stalks of celery, three cut. And you can cut these as tiny or as big as you like. Um, some people like, like these big chunks like this. This is what we like. Some people like to dice them down, maybe a little bit smaller like that. Um, but just cut them to suit you and your family. And you're just going to dump them right on in there. And now, before we add any of the spices, you're going to add your oil. Um, I think the theory behind the oil is that it'll seep down into the chicken and help the herbs settle. Um, but you're going to add a ton of water and broth in a second. But I just always put the oil because the original recipe I started playing with called for it. You can use vegetable oil, canola oil. Um, I know there's healthier ones out there for those of you that um, are a little bit healthier than us. Um, but yeah, you can use any kind of oil you like, any kind. If you're more health conscious, you probably don't want to throw in the kind I do, but this is what we have. We're almost out. I actually looked at that. I was worried I wouldn't have enough, but I did. It's three tablespoons of the oil. And then you're going to need half a teaspoon of thyme. And funny story, real quick, I put this in. When I was getting ready to film this video, I was digging through the cupboard, and Keith asked me what I need, and I said, I need thyme. And Funnily enough, I just asked him for time to set up before he had to film this, but I didn't mean I needed that kind of time. I was looking for my time. Um, anyway, I love corny jokes and dad jokes, so if I could talk about um, 
joke about the names of spices in the kitchen, all the more better. I'm super cheesy corny. So the original recipe called for one bay leaf. I don't like the way bay leaves taste. I don't like the flavor they put in food. Um, basil is not the same as bay. It's a little bit different of a flavor, but I've always liked basil on like poultry recipes or poultry dishes. So I personally don't put the bay leaf in and use this instead. But if you like bay leaves, it's one whole bay leaf, but I just put in a fourth a teaspoon of basil just to kind of give it a little bit more flavor since I omit the bay leaf. And that is it for your spices and seasonings, except for your salt and pepper, which we're gonna do in just a moment. I'm gonna add in the garlic because I forgot about the garlic. It's one teaspoon. So one teaspoon of garlic on top of all those other spices. And then you're gonna add the salt and pepper um, to taste. I do like ish, one teaspoon of salt, give or take. You guys can always add more salt and pepper when the soup is done in your individual servings. And I have about a fourth a teaspoon of pepper if you don't like it as hot or as peppery you can use like a fourth a teaspoon or sorry an eighth a teaspoon instead of the fourth. now that that is all in there we're going to add in the liquid um, you need six cups of chicken broth and one cup of water you can use the pre-made chicken broth if you like it. You guys that have been watching for a while know I love making my own chicken broth out of broth base. And so in this picture, I have seven cups of water because I'm going to add in enough base to make six cups of broth plus my one cup of water. But I just put all the water together and then I'll dump in the base. It already smells so good. So because we had six cups of broth. I'm going to need 12 teaspoons of base. Fun for you guys to watch. Shall I count these with you guys? Three. Ha, 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 ha. We don't want to demonetize myself. Four. Ha, ha, ha. Five. Six. I'll probably edit some of this out, but I'll just keep counting right now. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so that is going to be your soup minus two ingredients you will add later. But this is going to be your soup. This is what it looks like now and I like everything else I make in a crock pot I make it the night before I put the crock pot in the fridge all the flavors um, mix and mingle overnight and have a party and then I put it on the crock pot and cook it six to eight hours on low and then tomorrow night before we eat I will add in three tablespoons of parsley and I will pre-cook these egg noodles on the stove and then add them in. Um, you need about 12 ounces to a pound of noodles and the egg noodles are what you need. As far as whether you use the thin or the wide, that's up to you and your personal taste. I know a lot of folks like the really thin egg noodles, so it's more like that traditional really thin noodle um, you get in chicken noodle soup. Keith and I like these big extra wide fat ones. Um, one additional note with the noodles and you'll see me tomorrow night again tell you this. You can cook these on the stove, pre-cook them, bring them over to your crock pot, toss them in, mix everything together, put your parsley on top, and have a whole pot of soup ready to go, but then you can't really freeze it. Noodles don't freeze and then reheat very well. Um, their texture becomes very strange and sometimes they'll like fall apart in the soup. So I 100% do not recommend freezing noodles and then trying to reheat the soup um it just gets kind of like gross like they fall apart and they're all soggy so if you're going to have a pot that you're taking to a party or you know you have a lot of people eating you can put the noodles right on in 
we cook the noodles separately, we serve them separately, and then everybody that's eating can add in however many noodles they want. Like I like mine with lots of noodles and extra noodles and Keith just likes a few. And then um, if you leave the noodles separate, whatever's in here is freezable. You can freeze it in airtight containers, like I said in the beginning, for like a month or two. And then you can take out one container at a time, reheat it on your stove, make noodles on the side to add in. So I'll be back tomorrow to show you guys what we're gonna do with the chicken and the remaining two ingredients. Hey guys, so my chicken has been cooking in the crock pot in the chicken stock with the carrots, celery, onion, all those seasonings we put in last night. I have taken the chicken out already and cubed it into small bite-sized pieces with a knife. And you can do this, or you can alternatively take two forks and shred your chicken. That's just a personal preference. If you do like traditional chicken noodle soup, the cubes are more traditional. So once they're cut up real small, sometimes I go back through like this just to make sure. You can put it right back on in the crock pot. That was a loud bang. Just be real careful because obviously your broth is going to be very hot. You don't want to splash it up on yourself. I have done that before. It's not a fun feeling. Then what I'll usually do is just give it a stir with my ladle. Just to make sure all the seasonings are mixed in and the chicken gets mixed in. At this point, you can put your noodles right in there if you're planning on um, eating all of it, taking it to a party, or eating it within a couple of days. Um, because you can put the noodles in, mix them in, and put the crock pot in the refrigerator once it's cooled off with any leftovers. But if you're planning on freezing any of this for later, you don't want to put your noodles in. I think I've said this before in some of my other videos, maybe even last night in the prep video, but noodles do not freeze and then reheat very well. The texture becomes very, they almost like fall apart in your mouth. They're just not good. So I don't add them into the crock pot. We will dish these out individually into our bowls and each person can have however many noodles they like in their soup. And then I will let this cool down and take out about half to freeze for later and add the noodles to the remainder for you know leftovers in a day or two. So if you're not gonna freeze it though, you could put your noodles right on in there. One thing I did almost forget to add in here is your parsley. This is purely optional, you know, parsley doesn't really have a taste to it. It's more for looks. You wanna do about three tablespoons on top, just like that. Usually once I cube the chicken and put the parsley in, I just let it continue on low heat until we are ready to eat. I usually make grilled cheese, some kind of sandwiches on the side. So that's how you make homemade chicken noodle soup in the crock pot um, for single use or freeze it for later. It's super easy to do. Everybody loves chicken noodle soup, but nobody loves slaving over a stove. And uh, Hope your family enjoys this. Let me know what you think. I did want to add one quick tip. At Thanksgiving time, when you guys have tons of leftover turkey, this is something you can do with your already pre-cooked turkey that's left over from your Thanksgiving meal. You can do everything we've done here exactly as we've done it, except when you first add the meat in, you'll cube it because it's already cooked. And you can make turkey noodle soup. It tastes pretty much the same. It's all poultry, right? Do me a favor before you leave, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you've tried this or if you have a different uh, recipe for chicken noodle soup. Smash the like button, it always helps the channel. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to the channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. Until next time, you guys have a good night.